So this monitor that you're looking at cost $23,000. It's not HDR, it's only 1080p, and that's exactly why Apple's new Pro Display XDR is so impressive. Yo guys, Jonathan here, and out of everything that was announced at WWDC, I was probably most excited for the Pro Display XDR. It's a 32 inch 6K display that sells for $4,999. And yeah, that's not cheap. When you stack it up against comparable options, you'll quickly realize there's not really anything else in the same league right now. And yes, the stand. It is inarguably overpriced, but even if Apple charged $6,000 for the display, included the stand, and didn't say a word, it would still be a better deal than anything else out right now. So yeah, that 6K resolution is impressive. It's a monstrous 6016 by 3384, but what's even more impressive is not only how bright the display is, which is a thousand nits, but the fact that it can sustain that in a form factor that's just over an inch thick has a single power cable that looks like it could belong to a Mac mini. And then when you combine that hardware with software, it's doing things that no other display is doing right now. Now the thousand nits is sustained, but it actually has a peak brightness up to 1.6 thousand nits, which essentially gives you superhuman powers to see dynamic range you wouldn't see on your normal display. So when you pair that with the million to one contrast ratio, that range you're getting, those blacks all the way up to those extreme highlights is crazy. But it doesn't stop there, and no one's talking about this because everyone's busy writing five paragraph articles about a stand, but what is the most impressive thing about this is again, how that hardware interacts with the software. If you're familiar with how Mac handles retina scaling, it's very similar to that. So Final Cut Pro, for example, the text, the UI, that's all rendered at four to one. So four pixels per every pixel of space, but video conversely is then rendered at one to one so you can see it for what it is. And they're doing that with SDR and HDR content, which blows my mind. I've seen tweets with people saying lame, that is stupid. Why would I wanna blind myself looking at a display that bright? But what people are missing is that SDR content will actually output at 500 nits, which is equivalent to a 5K iMac or iMac Pro. So application UI, web browsing, Mac OS, essentially anything that is not HDR, that will output at 500 nits. And again, what's crazier is that much like retina scaling, it's gonna know the difference between HDR content and SDR content. So in Final Cut, for example, the text, the UI, that's going to output at 500 nits, while video, that's gonna hit that thousand nits up to 1.6K. So if you can find me anything on planet Earth that comes even close to that, I will edit a video in Premiere Pro on a PC. Now for comparison, again, the monitor that I showcased at the beginning of this video cost 23 thousand dollars and we actually own a smaller similar version of that which is a 16.5 inch sony reference monitor it's not hdr it's not 4k it's actually only 1080p it is oled but it cost nearly four thousand dollars and we've actually considered buying a second one because it's been one of the best things we've picked up and something that we use all the time now, if you're in that Sony world and you want something bigger, you want something that features HDR, you want something that is more than 1080p, the price on something like this will shock you. Yeah, so the, the X300 is 36,288. Um, there's a few different versions. So the OLED master monitor is 42. I can't breathe. And if you keep looking, whether it's Canon, TV Logic, you're looking at price points of 28,000, 30,000, maybe 20,000. I would say probably the closest thing on paper right now is the 31 inch Atomos Neon, which still costs $8,000 and also doesn't come with a stand. Yeah, you get the same million to one contrast ratio, but if you really break things down, that's where you see the difference. There are 512 backlit LEDs on the Atomos versus 576 on the Apple display. And with the Atomos, you're getting a max brightness of a thousand nits and nowhere is that mentioned if that's sustained. I get it, it's a different product. It also records video. It is a different use case than the display. But again, this is $8,000. So it's a great reference point as to what you're getting with Apple's display. Beyond that, what's really cool is you're getting video specific refresh rates, which is a really nice touch and multiple reference modes, which is awesome. I got a chance at WWDC to go really deep and spend a ton of time with not only the Mac Pro, 
but also this display. So to see it outside of just the traditional monitor on a desk world, that was awesome. They had it mounted vertically on a cart with a VESA arm, no thousand dollar stand needed, and they were using that in conjunction for a photo shoot. So that setup was actually a 15 inch MacBook Pro that was driving the XDR display. The photographer would snap a shot and in real time, you would then see those images on the display, which was incredible. To top things off, they threw in an iPad Pro, which made things even crazier. But going back to the display, getting a chance to see those high res images in real time is invaluable, especially if you have your client there. I also got a chance to see it alongside an iMac Pro being used to finish up an HDR time lapse. And again, that's dynamic range that you couldn't see on just the 5K iMac display. That's why this is so awesome. Now I'm definitely usually a single monitor kind of guy, but getting a chance to see three of these in a Final Cut Pro 10 setup was beautiful. This also kind of showcases the power of the Mac Pro because in this setup with three monitors, that is up to three streams of 8K ProRes RAW video. They got one display that is dedicated purely just to full HDR output and oh my God, that was so many pixels. In this Pro Tools setup, for example, that's going to be a situation where, hey, not everyone needs or is going to use that stand. I'm not gonna sit here and argue with you and try to tell you that that stand is a good deal. I will say everyone who thought Apple was displaying the stand out there just by itself, that was actually for an AR demo. But when you get into pro level equipment, all accessories are overpriced. If you bought a red camera, just the brain alone, that is $15,000. And with that, you can't shoot a second of video you're gonna have to buy a monitor. You're gonna have to buy a way to plug in a battery. And if you wanna buy something to record that on, just that red mag alone costs nearly $1,000 for 120 gigabytes and newsflash, that is essentially just Samsung flash. There's a handle from red that costs $550. That's an expensive piece of aluminum. It gets worse from air. You're talking like $2,000 handles. It just keeps going on and on. So again, it doesn't justify it, but in that pro world, it's a completely different level. All in all, I'm gonna say, yes, Apple screwed up by launching that stand separately because I think what they did is kind of took all the focus off how good this display is and allowed everyone just to meme it up and leave all their focus on a piece of aluminum. But it does not deny the fact that yes, that pro display is expensive, but it's kind of the only thing out like it right now. Stay tuned for an in-depth exclusive look at the Mac Pro very soon. This is Jonathan N. I'll catch you guys later.